What it do, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Flow, ISPmusic.biz, you know, formerly known as Anton Paris, keep it all 100. But uh, here we go like this. Uh, this is the 2009 first video clip of the court drama that I'm going through right about now. I figured I'd address that and kind of address some of the matters of what I'm going through with business-wise with Immortal Souls Publishing Company, which is my publishing company uh, where I do my production for my music and the clothing line Cali USA the Imperial Material all that stuff can be seen from uh, Immortal Souls Publishing .biz website you can go out there check that out your boy you know it kind of do his thing real big you know uh, right about now I kind of just been staying out the way trying to avoid a lot of uh, media attention and you know getting too outspoken because uh, with my court matter that I have right now it's best that I kind of stay out the way not too much in the limelight not get any negative attention but uh, the drawn out matter of this has kind of made it to a point where I'm definitely going to have to speak on it, especially when uh, there's racial issues do uh, involved in this matter. Now, first off, before I get to the court drama stuff, let me get on to uh, talking about uh, my publishing company with Immortal Souls Publishing. Uh, I'm a registered company through ASCAP, so of course all you ASCAP members out there know that uh, we just recently received our ballots for our new ASCAP. Uh, voting this year and as you can see I've got one here for uh, the I believe this one would be my personal or actually this is the business one and well actually this, yeah this is my personal one excuse me and then this is the business one for Motor Souls Publishing just so you can uh, check that out to see yeah your boy Mr. Flo got the message out there you know I'm definitely gonna have to vote pick somebody out of here uh, for our new uh, board of directors uh, basically, I'm going to be kind of looking through uh, between Doug Wood, Dan Foliart, Matthew Wilder, uh, Rudy Perez, and uh, Mark Holman. Definitely going to take some time and actually review you guys, and uh, I'm going to cast in my ballot and uh, vote in somebody this year, definitely. So you can definitely expect that from me on the business tip. Uh, going to the music, uh, I intend on dropping uh, the album for Jay Bizzle, which is uh, the young generation which I'm having coming out. He's in junior high school going on to, you know, uh, high school the following year, uh, with the next school semester after this summer, basically. I plan on putting his album out, kind of put it on the back burner right about now, as uh, I'm revolving through the doors of this court matter right now. And as far as uh, my album, Mr. Flow, Agent 916, Six, uh, the rapper who loved me album. I'm definitely gonna have that for you. You know, I've been recording on that. It's just a matter of you know business wise and finance wise, uh, dealing with the court matter that I'm going through right now. I haven't quite had the opportunity to put the funds into the music side right now. I've got to kind of stay focused on um, the business matters that, uh, as far as uh, my freedom is being just concerned. So speaking of that, uh, the court matter, let's uh, go kind of through from my uh, perspective of basically what happened here. Now the whole incident started April 4th, 2008. Uh, I was residing at my father's house who lives in a uh, pretty, uh, fairly nice neighborhood. Uh, those of you who know the West Sacramento area, uh, Southport. Uh, I actually, I'm not too familiar with Southport, I've kind of lived in between East Sacramento and uh, South Sacramento during uh, the years that I grew up, and uh, at this point in time, uh, my father has a pretty nice house out there in uh, West Sac, out in Southport, and so I had been spending some time over at his house, uh, those of you who know me, uh, friend-wise, and uh, those close to me kind of know the incident that I went through, as far as uh, um, me working as a security guard, I was involved into a shootout where I actually took a shot into my left leg, and uh, this was in February of 2007. Matter of fact, beginning of February, just before my birthday. So you know, which sucks. My birthday is February 6th. I ended up getting to a shootout and getting injured. But uh, you know, my guns were legit because I work as an armed security guard. Uh, everything worked out legitimate wise for me. I was blessed enough uh, with the opportunity to be able to walk out of the hospital the same night and pretty much all they did is uh, wash out the bullet hole which went through and through and uh, I was on a recovery process from there. Now, uh, as to my knowledge, uh, the police, Sacramento Police Department didn't recover any suspects on this case matter. It was a shootout that happened and uh, I'm not going to give full details on it but um, 
basically is, you know, people involved in the case matter between uh, me and them with the shootout happening. There's been no, uh, let's just say, no point in to where I'm comfortable with saying, well, you know, I don't have the right to protect myself. Uh, I've got all the credentials as far as gun permits and everything to carry a firearm and own a firearm, so I've definitely taken advantage of that. I carry a nice, beautiful 45. Actually, I got a couple of them, a pair of 45s. But um, let's get into uh, the, the court incident. Let's kind of fast forward to that incident. Um, in April of 2004, this was at the end of my doctor's uh, paperwork to where I'm ending my recovery status. Uh, I should be off of my disability. Uh, during the process of when I got shot, I missed about eight months of work. And uh, thankfully for California and uh, Governor Schwarzenegger having uh, nice uh, plans out here to take care of uh, victims of violent crimes, I received a check for $8,000 in February of 2008 to help cover the losses that I missed by not being able to work due to the disability of the gunshot wound in my leg and me going through the recovery process, which was a beautiful thing. You know, that was a blessing in its own. It took a long time for me to actually get that to come through. Um, let me go to another thing to back up just a little bit. Uh, prior to me getting shot, I was focusing on trying to go to school at the Los Angeles Recording School. And uh, after the injury, that kind of set that back. I was hoping to kind of get my audio engineering degree because I, I work a whole lot with uh, Pro Tools and uh, Cubase and Steinberg in the window uh, as far as doing my recording right now for my company. And I was looking at getting some degrees so I can actually go around and kind of uh, work with other artists in the industry, kind of run the studio and help uh, bring up the level of what I'm doing right now as far as with my own company rec recording. But uh, all that got kind of, my whole life basically got put on hold after the, the shootout incident. Now after getting to a point where I'm recovering and I'm at my father's house where I normally do uh, my exercise recoveries, uh, I was hoping to get back into working security again. So I have my batons and I have my uh, weapons over at his uh, residence and that's where I kind of hung out at and doing my recovery, just kind of staying out of the way of, you know, the normal areas where I stay at to kind of avoid, you know, getting into any further uh, incidents with this uh, matter. Well, come to find out, you know, I'm not, I'm not even safe at my own uh, residence just based on, you know, the racial tendencies that uh, the police department of West Sacramento has. Now, I'm not going to say that every single officer within Sacramento or even West Sacramento has these same tendencies, but it's the ones that do that make it bad for, you know, everybody, especially, you know, being an African-American business owner. Uh, it's very difficult to actually have to go through these uh, circumstances when it's, uh, I mean, it was 2008, it's going on 2009, we even have a black president, Mr. Obama, in office now, and, you know, these, hopefully that'll help uh, change incidents like this in the future, but right now this is affecting my life, this is affecting my business, and this is affecting, you know, others that I'm in the uh, middle of trying to take care of, me taking care of my family, my daughter, uh, my mother, and uh, my brothers, and my father, and everything, I, I've always been a beneficial factor going through this uh, predicament right about now is kind of, you know, taking away a lot of from my abilities to be able to do what I need to do and actually uh, be a financial provider because uh, I'm all tied up with the court matter. And it's kind of making it difficult with uh, me obtaining my job situation to even working as an armed security officer. Even though I haven't uh, been convicted of anything at this point in time, it's still the allegations which, you know, it's kind of make it difficult for me to actually uh, hop in with another company as far as uh, working as an armed security officer right now. So, uh, back to the April 4th incident. Pretty much what happened is I'm parked out in front of my uh, father's house, uh, my vehicle. I have a beautiful Lincoln Town car on nice 20-inch rims. And I'll probably, you know, give you guys a nice little view of that a little bit later. But um, basically what ended up happening was um, I have the car outside of the garage. You know, it's been sitting in the garage, getting dusty, needed some work on it. Uh, I was actually, basically, to tell you the truth, at that point in time, I was getting the alternator fixed at the time. 